Good afternoon. My name is Mary Manuel. I am a Lansing resident and I've lived in the Lansing area my entire life. I'm an asset manager at Sinair, which is a nonprofit community development finance institution that supports community and economic development initiatives through loans, investments, and services. As I prepared for today, I found out that it's hard to talk about my own homelessness because it brings it all back. Here I go. I get emotional and that makes me nervous, so I'm just going to read my story. I would like to start my story with the happy ending. I have a wonderful life, a loving husband, four amazing kids aged from one year to 28 years old, one of which is on his way to medical school. I have an amazing job that I love with an organization that supports the things I'm passionate about. I can afford a nice home and a nice car. I can buy groceries every week and I can pay my bills without fretting about it. And I'm finally pursuing one of my lifelong dreams, which is a bachelor's degree in business. Now I would like to tell you how I got there. It wasn't easy because as you may have noticed when I talked about my children's ages, I started pretty young at the age of 16 with my first baby. As a young single mother, I jumped right into working full-time immediately. I was always living in situations that involved roommates because sharing expenses was the only way we could make ends meet. When I was 20 and my son was three, we became homeless. At that time, my paychecks were about $175 a week. Daycare was about $60 a week. Rent was $250 a month. So I had about $200 a month to cover car insurance, gas, groceries, utilities, and whatever else came up. I cleaned my employer's building to cover health insurance costs for me and my son. It wasn't much, but it was better than nothing. My son and I were one emergency, one illness, one parking ticket away from homelessness. And we existed like that for a long time. What finally got me was a large electricity bill and an irresponsible roommate. The Board of Water and Light bill was in my name. The apartment was in my roommate's name. I had just paid rent when she told me she wouldn't have the money for the electric bill. It was summertime and it was very hot outside. I knew we couldn't be without power. I called Board of Water and Light to see what could be done and they said we could do payment arrangements. Well, the payment arrangement she came up with was way more than I could afford. I felt so trapped and hopeless and I started to cry and I pleaded with her and I asked her, what do I do? I told her I'm working full time, I was doing everything right and I still wasn't making it. What do people do in these situations? In retrospect, I knew she felt bad for me. She asked if I had any assistance like food stamps or help with daycare. She was trying to help me figure out a way to make things work. I didn't even know things like that existed at that point in my life. It was very difficult to try to figure out how to access these programs. As a result of this situation, my son and I ended up homeless for a while. We got evicted from our apartment. Luckily, I have always had good friends, and I think we used up just about every favor and all of the good graces of the people in our lives at that time while we got on our feet. In a situation like that, you're trapped. You don't have an address. You don't have a phone number. This was before everybody had cell phones. You don't have gas money or even the time to try to figure out these solutions. You're in emergency mode. You're hungry. You're panicked. And this makes obtaining assistance extremely difficult. Over time, I was able to take advantage of food stamps for a while, and that helped tremendously. I got some daycare assistance for a while, and that helped too. I was finally able to save up for a deposit and first month's rent on a tiny little apartment for my son and me. It was a dump, but it was ours. And we had a place to go every day, and we had a place to sleep every night. Looking back on it, I realized that the inaccessibility of housing programs like Section 8 made it a lot harder for me to pull myself out. I think it's a little better these days, but I also understand that these programs are now under fire. I wish I would have known more about how to access affordable housing when I was struggling. I was able to pull myself out of poverty, but it took a very long time and my children and I went through a lot in the process. If I would have had access to Section 8, I could have gotten through college a lot sooner. We would have had far fewer crises like car repossessions, utility shutoffs, and weeks where we ate mac and cheese every night for dinner and measured out just enough milk for each kid so we wouldn't run out before the next paycheck. I got myself into that situation and I got myself out. People like me make mistakes all of the time. They get themselves into situations where they need help. Sometimes they get trapped in these situations and it's tough to pull themselves out. That's what these programs are for. These programs are stepping stones for people who make mistakes and find themselves in situations where they need help. 
These programs allow people to step up and out of their bad situations. They allow people to get the help they need to pull themselves out of the bad places they are in so they can make their lives better. We need these programs and we need them to be accessible. I'm living proof of that.